Live from the studios of Vermont and Kentucky, it's Riding Nerdy News with the Riding Nerdy News crew. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, Chris? Oh, good. I'm, my mic is not in the right spot for me to actually look at the camera, I'm realizing. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to fix this the same way I fixed it the other day. I'm just going to position myself differently. There you go. Whatever's comfortable. I'm going to scoot, scoot back here. Oh, well, shit. There. We'll do that. <laughs> Problem solving live at its <laughs> finest. <laughs> How you doing, bud? I'm good, man. How about you? I'm doing How's good. How's your day I'm been? Doing good. What's the, what's the latest from your neck of the woods? Oh... Uh. Same old, same old. Uh, the weather's actually been nice, which is a good change um, for Kentucky. You know, I realize. Uh, thankfully, no. Uh, a... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, unlike uh, Zach and Brandon, which the weather always seems to be trying to kill them, <laughs> I, uh, I haven't. It hasn't come for me yet. Thankfully, I'm counting my blessings. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I was about to say, we, we, I realize we've never done a weather segment on this show. Maybe we should add that as uh, as one of our one of our bits. <laughs> I can just I can see it now. There's a weather segment brought to you by Right New Right Nerdy News, and it's just Zach saying it fucking sucks. <laughs> that makes me think of yeah, pretty uh, much uh, that would sum it up. Oh maybe, yeah, that makes me think of the uh, that w- that was in one of the Family Guy episodes. Like, and now you know now uh, to Ollie with the weather, <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah. So if you're uh, new to the program or the stream or uh, any of that kind of jazz, you have found yourself in the wonderful environs of the Writing Nerdy News segment, uh, part of the wider Writing Nerdy universe uh, that includes our podcast, our Let's Plays, and now our news. I am Chris, uh, and I'm joined with the lead anchor for the Writing Nerdy News segment. (laughs) <laughs> Hello, my name is Jay, and uh, like Chris said, I am the quote-unquote lead anchor. Very important. Uh, I handle none of the technical aspects of the show. It's all a, it's a title and name alone. Well, no, I mean, that, that's exactly what lead anchors do. I don't know if you've ever seen like you know news dramas or anything like that. It's uh, or like like the newsrooms a classic example. The lead anchor doesn't actually do any of the technical stuff. Uh, you know, t- technically, what's going on here? Yeah, but is, you know, one thing. Go 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 ahead go ahead. I don't have the uh, I don't have the star level charisma that a Jeff Daniels brings to a show. <laughs> I, I I guess that's good. That's a good show. I it really I was impressed by his acting. Oh, it is for sure, for sure. Uh, that he was also, great, he and plays... especially like with. Go ahead. When you have like uh, like an Aaron Sorkin type show, you never know if it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a good word to use. He's he's a good writer, but it's sometimes he's very like heady and he's kind of talks down to his audience a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Excuse for me. sure. Uh, but you know, that show was I feel like that show handled it it was very well written and it handled its uh uh issues in a very relatable and in, in uh, just a smart way. Yeah, I thought so too. Uh and and yeah, and uh, Jeff Daniels is uh, uh I I like his acting style. Um he he plays mm-hmm. He played very well in that. He also plays historical figures very well. He does a good job as uh, Colonel Chamberlain in Gettysburg. He actually plays George Washington in, oh, I'm blanking on the name. It's quite a good little movie about uh, the crossing of the Delaware uh, and the attack by the Continental Army against uh, the Hessians at Trenton, uh, uh, which is one of the things that kind of keeps the American Continental Army together. And Jeff Daniels plays uh, uh, George Washington in that historical flick and does a very good job uh, in that as well, I thought. So, yeah, yeah he's good. Uh, oh, also, he's in 101 Dalmatians, the live-action version of that, I believe. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I, 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 that, probably not important to anybody else. I grew up with the animated 101 Dalmatians, <laughs> like watching it on repeat, and I did the same when the live-action one came out, so... I have Jeff Daniels. Well, the moment forever. the moment you said that, I started to think like, have I have I seen the live action One Hundred One Dalmatians? I don't think so. Oh, what really? Yeah, it's the one uh, had some CGI Dalmatians. Yeah. Jeff Daniels is a computer game designer instead of a a composer like he is in the cartoon. Hmm. We did watch Cruella recently. I haven't seen that yet. Is it good? 
it uh i thought it, i thought it was all right you know i i, I kind of went into it a little skeptical um but uh i thought it was i thought it was pretty nice you know i'm not real big on a lot of uh disney properties really if it weren't for the fact that they bought marvel and star wars i might not i might not have disney plus but uh I, yeah they, I, they have enough marvel and star wars properties to go around yeah and i i mean i definitely hear you there because i i really enjoyed disney as a kid um and I rewatched mm-hmm. some uh, of their movies uh, as an adult, partly for the nostalgia or other reasons. But yeah, I think that they've been smart in what they have acquired of other properties because traditionally they had been pretty focused on the kids market. Uh, and so, you know, expanding out, and especially with something like Marvel, where they can apply all of the, their muscle uh, with animation uh, to that, uh, uh, that theater of it's the same with uh, uh star wars too you know especially with uh, how they branched out and uh opened up animation to uh, uh japanese studios for star wars visions and things like that like it, it seems to make sense i think they've, they've right. purchased properties that will do well for them and also widens their their customer base i mean just practically so it's not just kids and parents of kids but really everybody mm-hmm yeah, they've been really smart about how they've done things. I mean, unsurprisingly, with it being Disney. Yeah, no, that's that's true. Uh, you, you don't you don't stay in the game for as long as they have without knowing a thing or two. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, so uh, uh, do, do you? Have I was going to say, speaking of yeah? of uh, Marvel and uh, Disney, I have a I've got a burning question for you. Yes, that's what I was about to ask. All right, what do we got? Yeah, so I was just ahead of you. On uh, on brand with uh, we're talking Marvel today. Uh, today's burning question, uh, which you might not be familiar with these characters, the Scarlet Witch and Mantis. Uh, Mantis being from Guardians of the Galaxy, the girl with the uh, actually she might have appeared in the second one. So anyway, uh, she has the ability to influence people's emotions. Yes, I know who you're talking about. Yes, she is in the second one. And then Scarlet Witch. Uh, much more of a mind control thing. So my burning okay. question for you is: Would you rather have Scarlet Witch's mind control, or would you rather have Mantis's emotional control? Both of them very invasive to someone's privacy. See, I, I kind of take this with a bit of a D and D flair uh, because mind like control. It. Yeah, like it. it Especially when you like when you think of D and D spells, a lot of the mind control spells, the person understands that they have been controlled after the fact. Um, oh, interesting. Versus like persuasion, like charm is still definitely like you you know that you've been influenced after the fact. But there is, I feel like with the emotions one, you could play it off more as you are a very charismatic speaker uh, and are able to just you know, uh, uh, you know. Uh, nurture the emotions you want someone to feel towards you and so i'm thinking you know in terms of being suddenly a very dynamic and charismatic leader if you're able to subtly influence people's emotions um which like I, that's almost maybe more sinister but i think that would be the one that i uh, it, it makes more sense to me because the outright reading someone's mind uh, or controlling their mind rather I don't know. At least with this one, it f- I feel like there's a chance if someone has a very strong uh, counter to you that they, they won't be swayed, uh, especially if whoever had that power used it with some restraint so that it wasn't just full-on fully influencing people's emotions but just seasoning it a little bit, you know? Right. Like Alexander uh, for me, I may, think have it's, had, may have had It's Mantis more of an argument powers. of like... Yeah. <laughs> for me it's like uh, utilitarian versus like personal so I would say in my personal life I would love to be able to uh, you know control emotions or like she's shown in the movie she can make people sleep um, in in a couple different movies and so I'm thinking like okay when my two year old is throwing a temper tantrum I can just you know cool her, cool her uh, anger and put her to sleep but uh, <laughs> on a much more like big on a big scale like useful level i'm thinking okay you can use mind control for um obviously if you're if you have good intentions you can use it to foil bank heists or you know on an even bigger scale uh convince world leaders not to go to war with each other but then you know 
that that almost becomes like that's just your life you know what i mean you can't you can't have yeah. a day job and control people's minds <laughs> i feel like I feel like that takes up a lot of your uh, brain power your time oh yeah oh yeah well i mean i think it's the thing this is actually a really good question because that's the that's the other piece of it is it's not just like which power you would want but also like both of those powers how do you not fall to the dark side of the force very quickly because if you have that kind of power right uh that's going to be the temptation if 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 at a whim you can raise armies to your Mm -hmm. command or or bring you know nations to their knees uh by influencing world leaders and things like that that's that's a that's a tremendous amount of almost like uh, I don't know if you ever saw Star Trek Wrath of Khan or anything like that where you know it's the the arc of uh, Khan in Star Trek is the result of uh, a runaway eugenics movement where essentially uh, superhumans have been bred on Earth and so Khan and his cronies take over the world and run it as a dictatorship for a while uh, under uh, you now know, I have seen the newer trilogy. Is his origin the same in the newer trilogy? No, it's it's very much different, but it's the same kind of. It, it's so the original Khan was kind of more a brute strength type character, still very smart, but uh, projected his strength in a more um, forward uh, frontal way. Whereas the Khan in the new trilogy was much more, uh, it relied more on subterfuge. Still, again, very incredibly smart, but all of his plans were very sneaky. So, so kind of two sides of the same coin, which which I loved. That's why I like, I actually really like both of the depictions because, in some of the the books uh, about Khan that came out before the new Star Trek uh, trilogy, it showed that both were the the same. He would use guile and also brute force. Uh, whenever necessary to get his way but that that's the thing is essentially once you give someone that kind of power that ability and that's essentially what Khan had was that sort of ability uh, God Spock has some some line in the original series of like with superior power and superior intellect they they also bred superior ambition uh, so you know it's, it's, it would be, mm. <laughs> with all of that power the, anybody who had that power wanted to rule everything too so you know it's, it's so yeah, it's. I think that's that's right. the other piece is how you moderate yourself. Uh, might be impossible once you have. That's like a much power. better, a much better way of phrasing the whole Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility yeah. quote. But uh, it just is worded better. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is is sort of taken from a, a bit of a, a darker place where the assumption is not when you give someone a lot of power they have a lot of responsibilities. That when you give someone a lot of power they're going to use it, uh, and so you should be careful. Right. Uh, we got a couple of live answers coming in from our associates Uh, Zach makes a good point about uh, Zach went with emotions Uh, he makes a good point about he uh, would feel slightly less evil if he got his way while uh, making someone else feel happy Um, and then uh, Brandon with the (laughs) with the classic uh, why not both answer uh, I feel like at that at that point the world is just yours if you're controlling minds and emotions. I mean, yeah, hearts and minds, wrong. as it were. I'm trying. I'm, so I'm uh, to our topic man. today. <laughs> there you go. I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. Okay. I'm, I moved my mic up by one shelf, and I haven't been able to find a spot that I'm comfortable with it where I can look at the camera. Because with the way that the pit is set right. up right now, I've got multiple screens, so I'm tempted to look this way, because that's actually where my Discord window is, versus where the Twitch um, studio layout is. And the camera is obviously right here, so I want to be looking here, but I have a bad habit of looking that way, so I'm trying to situate the mic so that wherever the mic is, I have to look at the camera. So, I didn't write. Sorry for the distraction. Oh, yeah. I never... You're fine, man. When we started doing this, I I never knew where to look because I want to look right at the camera, but then I look at you when you're talking, and then at some point I just said, fuck it, and well, <laughs> hopefully that's people thing. don't mind where I'm looking. I think that <laughs> they, they, they did some studies on that about, like, it can be disconcerting to have someone just staring at you the entire time, so that's where I, I sort of, I don't know if this is any kind of good cinematography because I never studied that stuff in school, but... I, because I have the where I'm looking at your face just slightly off kilter, I sort of look just kind of past the camera, which I think is less disconcerting. I mean, I can just do this, right. but that might get disconcerting <laughs> after a while. Well, Especially you know, it's like, uh, have you ever heard of the... 
Have you ever heard of the triangle method? They say when you're talking to someone, you're supposed to, every three or four seconds, you're supposed to alternate between each eye and the tip of their nose or their mouth. Ah. You're supposed to make like a triangle. And it's it's kind of a thing that comes up more with like sociopaths. It's the kind of thing they have to teach themselves. Um, but I think it's just an interesting thing that they discovered doing a lot of psychological studies. Uh, on that, like, Because, I mean, when you stare at someone in the eyes for too long, they get uncomfortable. Right. That actually, that makes a lot of sense because I do move my eyes around a lot when I talk. I hadn't, I had not mm -hmm. realized that, yeah, interesting. Right, so that's, yeah, that's that's exactly why then. Because so for a while I know with news anchors, people were very disconcerted with them because when teleprompters were a thing, people would stare right at the camera and read the the mm -hmm. words uh, uh of the news story and without without having any papers or anything in front of them people were just like that didn't seem right because they were expecting to have the script in front of them so for a long time uh and even to some extent even today news anchors still have papers on the desk that they'll rustle around and move and stuff it's all a facade just to make people feel like they mm -hmm. have their their news and facts written down in front of them and aren't reading off of a teleprompter so and it's the same reason uh, uh, politicians don't gesture towards you because that's considered aggressive. Right. And we, we talk as much with our bodies as we do with our words. Oh, so no, yeah. I mean, presidents yeah, absolutely. always have their own little, you know, hand gestures or whatever. Just because, yeah. uh, I guess, conveys them more as open and, and non-threatening. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's probably the weirdest thing about doing stuff uh, digitally like this because I usually talk with my hands quite a bit, whereas when I'm mm. talking to a camera... Uh, especially if I'm in a constricted space or like how it's shot here where, you know, you can't really see my hands most of the time, so I don't really talk with my hands in the same way. We could yeah. just, we could start doing this like Talladega Night style where we just hold our hands up to the camera and talk. You're not on fire, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, sorry for that derailment. You were saying uh, what our main topic was going to be tonight. Well, actually, before we get to our main topic, I believe uh, there was an issue we wanted to talk about briefly oh, before we get into that. My, yes. Thank you very much for that. I forgot entirely. Yeah. So, uh, big news. If you haven't heard it already, uh, and if you're watching us on Twitch, you almost certainly have, but it just bears repeating here just in case. Uh, Twitch has experienced a very large data breach, uh, and details are still sketchy, uh, but it appears that a lot of information was leaked onto the internet and uh, some documents have appeared uh, that detail, you know, some sensitive information like uh, the amount of money that uh, streamers uh, are making and things like that. Uh, Twitch, which is, of course, uh, an Amazon company, is still trying to get a handle on what all has happened. Uh, their official... Uh, well, I didn't know that. What? Which piece? That uh, Amazon owned Twitch. Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That's that's how uh, that's how Prime is linked into Twitch I wonder, and stuff. So I don't wonder if there's any. You think there's any like ripple effects? If there's like, uh, I wonder if Amazon has its own sort of uh, consolidated defenses. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Any any time, especially you're talking about large uh, companies like this, where you have multiple sort of branded companies, uh, they a lot of times are having their own infrastructure. Especially since Twitch is pretty specialized compared to like say Amazon, uh, Amazon's streaming service uh, I'm sure has its own separate infrastructure as does the Amazon store and everything else and that's apparently kind of what happened here what they're saying is that uh, there was a server configuration change uh, error so one of their servers did something uh, they weren't expecting it to uh, either because of a patch or some other reasoning like that and when that happened it exposed that server or that set of servers in reality uh, to uh, a an attack by a third party uh, that e used malicious code to access the servers and exploit some information. Um, as far as Twitch can tell so far, uh, login credentials haven't been compromised uh, and credit card numbers haven't been compromised because they don't store full credit card numbers on the um, servers that were exposed. Uh, and uh, uh, what they have done out of an abundance of caution is rotate stream keys. Uh, so if you're using something like OBS or things like that and it's suddenly not working, uh, that's the reason. 
you'll just need to go and, and reinsert your um, uh, st- uh, stream key, and you'll be back up in operation. Uh, they were able to do it a bit uh, more easily with things that's their own software, like Twitch Studio. So the the stream key ro- rotation probably didn't sign you out of those. Um, you may or may not want to go ahead and change your passwords uh, out of precaution. Um, and I say may or may not because there's a couple of different uh, reasons why you would or wouldn't. You know, a lot of times with a, a data uh, breach like that, rotating a password can be a good idea and changing it to something new. Uh, especially if it's unclear if login credentials have been compromised. In this case, Twitch is saying that they haven't been. You know, you can use your own judgment because they also, by their own admission, aren't fully aware of the entire extent of the breach. So that is, with the information they have now, they don't think login credentials have been compromised. Um, Sometimes it's better to wait just a little bit, and I say this with extreme caution because uh, that seems counterintuitive. Uh, and again, uh, would you know always fact check me on things like this, and in the end, do what you feel like is the safest. Uh, but there is also occasions before the extent of a data breach is known, if there's any other leftover code on the server from the malicious attack, rotating a password now could be meaningless because the new password could still be accessed if the malicious code hasn't been fully removed yet. Uh, so sometimes it makes sense to wait a handful of days uh, if there appears to be no immediate danger uh, before you rotate your password. Uh, or just be super abundantly cautious and rotate that password now and then in about a week or two rotate it again just in case there's anything left over. Uh, so that's my that's my five and a half dollars on the uh, on the network security piece. Um, of course, obviously, streamers are kind of in a... Hey, I mean, that's a that's an important thing to, to be aware of. Yeah, and <clears throat> the, the, the threat landscape of cybersecurity these days is complicated, and so that's, that's one of those things is that is, weirdly, an attack vector in and of itself, is occasionally a bad actor will intentionally try to get into somebody's infrastructure uh, and will leave behind enough chaos, either to do what I'm suggesting or as a consequence of it, where when you rotate the passwords uh, early because someone discloses that they've been hit, uh, that they then can still access those passwords that you've literally just changed. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of. And you know, it's always best practice to change your passwords uh, frequently. Uh, and of course, one of the most important things, especially if you're uh, not going to rotate your passwords maybe as often as best practices say you should, uh, make sure that none of your passwords are the same uh, because, you know, uh, there's a lot of um, pretty uh, interesting and uh, a little bit scary sort of attacks that will use, if they know you've used the same password, will run through common social media, emails, and things like that and can then access a variety of things using just that one piece of information. So if you have multiple passwords, it makes it a lot harder uh, for the bad guys to get your data. Uh, and that way too, if you're, you know, if an account is compromised and you have to change the password, you don't have to then change the password on all of your other stuff because they're all the same. So you know, it it makes it easier for you. It compartmentalizes right. your risk a little bit better. Uh, and um, yeah, so you know, just something to be aware of. And and honestly, that's what the best thing you can do to protect yourself uh, is. is change those passwords frequently make sure no two are alike if you have the option for two-factor authentication or using a uh, authenticator app uh, that's also a good idea that way you're going to get notified or have to pass a secondary test uh, if someone tries to log into your account that keeps you more secure Uh, and i had one other thing and i've forgotten what it was Oh. Well, that's interesting. I wonder with them revealing. You said they they revealed uh, Twitch streamer uh, earnings and stuff like yes. that. I wonder if this was a information breach or if this was a uh, like a financially driven uh, invasion. Well, that was the thing. Is the initial speculation that I heard, and I'm trying to find it now, so I'm not just telling tales out of school. Uh, was that it sounded like it was initially an internal leak. And I think that was uh, an assumption made by some of the news agencies that picked this up first because it had kind of the appearance of like a WikiLeaks style thing where information was just suddenly dumped out on the internet. So they weren't sure if it was somebody, you know, disgruntled inside of Twitch. Uh, And the way that the Twitch update is worded now, in fairness, 
says it was a server glitch. Server glitches can also be intentional or unintentional. So uh, not necessarily ruled out that it wasn't some kind of inside job or that someone that had some knowledge of Twitch's infrastructure uh, leveraged <laughs> that to their advantage. So um, That definitely feels like a, a PR-friendly, like it was a server glitch, <laughs> air quotes, uh, almost like the military saying like training exercise, you know what I mean, in, in, yeah. in movies. And I mean, there's some, legitim- some legitimacy to that, that type of reporting it too, because, you know, honestly, cybersecurity is a bit of a misnomer because uh, whether or not you have your information stored on the internet, it's people that are the targets at the end of the day, because you're looking for information about people uh, who are in organizations or, or people's information and data or, you know, credit card numbers, things like that, stuff that's associated with uh, individual people. And so as much as it is about having good actual software security, it's also about having good people security because just like you're saying, intelligence mm-hmm. gathering, industrial espionage, all that other kind of stuff, some of the more successful vectors for that aren't a brute force attack into someone's network, but it is turning somebody on the inside who can give you that access. So a server glitch um, is sort of a good PR way to say it, but it does technically cover both the human and non-human factors that could have caused the breach. Right, I got you. Uh, last thing I was going to say on terms of security is if you're someone who has trouble remembering all of your passwords, you can use something like Passbolt. Uh, or there's other password keepers that that will encrypt a lot of stuff for you and will do this where it will uh, help you segment your passwords out to different places. Uh, But then you yourself only have to remember potentially one password. Uh, And uh, it's, again, another safer architecture for keeping your credentials safe. I think I've said safe like... Right, I definitely need to do it. (laughs) Hey... There's uh there's not enough times that you can stay. There's no there's no such thing as too much. Um, yeah. But I definitely need to invest in one of those password consolidation uh, programs because I'm I'm the kind of person who I know you're not supposed to, but I use the same like three passwords for the million things, all the streaming services and accounts and stuff like that. So. No, and that's the thing. It's an easy habit to fall into. Uh, it's a lot harder uh, to to try to create new passwords each time uh and the fun thing too is you know there's all kinds of human ways you can strengthen your account uh but really randomized passwords uh, help a lot too and that's what things like uh that that consolidate your passwords can also auto generate very strong passwords for you and that that keeps you safe from things like dictionary attacks a dictionary attack is where someone just tries to repeatedly log into an account over and over again using common words and phrases and things like that and and Mm. numbers so that's you know part of why when you look at making a new account anywhere it'll say your password has to be x number of characters long they're doing a mathematics calculation partially based on how often they are set up to have someone repeatedly log in to tell you know if your password is this long and we only allow 10 consecutive attempts before we lock your account or something like that then statistically if your password is this long and has these special characters and numbers and has to have caps and lowercase, the number of options for a password is so high that it's statistically unlikely that someone could brute force their way into the password. Right. That makes sense. But, I mean, that's, that's pretty well, much hopefully it. hopefully we don't see any... Like... Uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't... I don't know if there's any negative uh, things that could come from that. I don't want to see anybody's accounts get hacked or anything, but uh, I like to think, you know, I feel like anytime one of these breaches happens, it's the target is much bigger. You know what I mean? I don't, I know, uh, I know there's things like, you know, credit card implications, but uh, maybe and with, with the knowledge that it's owned by Amazon, maybe uh, they'll jump on it. They've got the, they've got the muscle to sort of, police this hopefully i would like to think oh yeah no and, and that's that's the thing is there there it's uh, obvious they are on top of it uh i mean partly because yeah amazon's got uh, a huge amount of it infrastructure obviously and so does twitch just on its own even before it was uh taken over by amazon so so yeah i mean uh and, and you're exactly right is with most especially the the um sort of big name cyber attacks and things like that the targets are much bigger so like i say this looks like it was targeted to release as much information about the financials of twitch itself and what they were paying the top tier streamers 
um, for whatever reason. Uh, some of it seems like it's targeted to try to make people unhappy with what the current situation is. Some people even speculated it was trying to expose that, you know, the pay scale was weird or, or, or not being disclosed properly or something with Twitch. All of that's kind of conjecture. You can Various streamers are reacting in a, a million different ways. Uh, if you're uh, someone like, uh, like me that watches a lot of other uh, streamers on Twitch, you know, everyone's talking about this at least a little bit, how it's affected them and things like that. So uh, definitely something to, to keep an eye out for. But yeah, you're right. That's the other piece is with a lot of these things, uh, data breaches in particular, individuals end up getting swept up kind of uh, along the way, but they're not, you know, someone's not going to come after uh, a, a, an individual person very frequently uh, on the internet with this kind of a targeted attack. So you can sleep a little bit easier that way because, you know, it's, uh, uh, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine right. not long ago with like, you know, there's, there's cyber attacks at a national scale too, where one country would want to knock out another country's uh, infrastructure or target another country's banking system or things like that. And generally, it's meant to, in those cases, to shut down the infrastructure, you know, or disrupt service for an amount of time. It's not meant to drain, you know, Joe Blow's bank account of two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, so, you know, it's, for, for the for the exactly. people that have the big scary resources out there for these kinds of things, we're not the targets. It's it's other other stuff. It's just the downside being that the internet is uh, is a free for all, right? That you know, the, in a lot of regards. All of what we do on the internet and what a lot of world militaries do on the internet and what a lot of hackers do on the internet, we're all on the same internet. It's like, you know, being on the same big superhighway. So that's why you got to be careful about the places that you it's visit. It's the Wild and, West. You know, keep your antivirus software up to date and stuff like that because it's there's large portions of the internet that are just the Wild West, the wildest of the Wild West out there. So, you know, again, right. just be safe. Well, all right. I, uh, if you want to, we can. Uh, we 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 might just want to make this like an internet security episode. <laughs> I, There's a, that rabbit hole doesn't have a bottom. It it really doesn't, and uh, it it too, in much of, as any other topic that we talk about that has kind of that nerdy edge to it, uh, from the realistic mm. to through to the sci-fi. There are wonderful books now written all about this kind of stuff that are both fiction or nonfiction. Uh, you know, so it's, well, and yeah. it's like you said, it applies to all of us. Well, it does. Everybody's on the same internet. No, exactly. And the world is only going to become more computerized. You know, with 5G coming online, that opens up whole possibilities for uh, more rapid local networking of wireless devices uh, and all kinds of stuff that are going to really change the landscape. Uh, I think for the better. You know, in terms of how we can how we can uh, automate industry and uh, bring information uh, and change the, land, the information landscape in a lot of cities and things like that. But at the same time, it also makes us more connected. So it's, you, know, you have to understand the benefits and the risks at the same time as you're moving forward into a more technologically advanced world. Right. But I think overall, you know, it's good. It's just, it's like everything else, you know, it's... A, Kind of a hiccup, yeah. Right, I mean, exactly. and it's it's not like it's not like Twitch is like this, uh, you know, new service that no. you know doesn't have safety protocols for this kind of thing. No, yeah, and I mean it's a good cautionary tale too of you know just with with everything. Always double check your work because obviously even the 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 pros can make mistakes. Uh, if this does turn out that it was just like you know someone pushed a server update that had a massive security hole in it, which happens, you know sometimes you know when you do your regression test and all that other kind of stuff, you just miss something. Uh, so it's you know <laughs> it's right. an important reminder that uh, uh, no one's perfect and that we can all make mistakes. And the important thing isn't that you made a mistake, but how you recover from it, you know, and what you learn from it in the process. So. Oh yeah. So, for today's topic, if we want to get into it, uh, the meat of the issue, uh, we're talking Marble What If. We touched on it a little bit last week. Yeah. Um, and we might, I don't know how much you want to discuss these, because as I understand it, you weren't able to watch uh, much of it, or you also hadn't seen a lot of the movies. Yeah, and so that's, yes, I I am absolutely willing to go kind of as far as you want to go on this one, because I have had plenty of time. Uh, to get caught up on the movies and just haven't managed to quite do it. Uh, I do know a fair well, hey, I mean, of you know, life's busy. 
Yeah, no, dogs. Life gets so busy. Uh, and uh, uh, but yeah, no, the what ifs. I think I mentioned last week. I had seen the first episode, which is a, a, a new take on Caption America. And I started the second episode, which I absolutely enjoyed the hell out of the beginning of. Uh, once I realized who everybody was, that's what I'm realizing. One of my major uh, issues in this is that I've seen a bunch of the Marvel movies only once or twice, and so when I read the blurb on the episode of like, "What if this person were, was it this person? It was this person instead." I'm just like, I don't, I know the superhero names, not the people's names, and so I get about a quarter of the way into the episode, from like, "Oh, okay, 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 now." <laughs> Right, I know who we're talking about. So yeah, and a lot of it is so uh, like they're very very narrow uh, context for some of this stuff. I mean, uh, they take they literally take uh, moments so specific to the movies that they're not even the focus point of the movie. Um, and like you said, uh, they're they're very interesting spins. You kind of do have to have a little bit of previous knowledge, or at least know something about the movies um and as far as like you saying we'll go as far as we want to with it i'm, I'm gonna keep it spoiler free uh just also for you but for also the the viewing audience anybody else that listens to this um and for me it's kind of like you know i was a comic book fan growing up yeah. and i mean i still am loosely but i i haven't been as as deep into marvel comics lately uh what if is kind of it's not a new concept it's. I mean, it's not specific to Marvel in general. I mean, uh, science fiction and fiction in general. There, there have always been, uh, you know, hypothetical uh, what if stories or uh, choose your own adventure type things could right, even fall sure. in that category. But um, the first episode, I thought uh, they started out strong. It wasn't necessarily the case, in my opinion, with kind of how Star Wars Vision starts out with really what could be considered their strongest episode. I wouldn't call the Captain Carter episode the the best out of all of them, um, but it was a great a great start. It essentially just reimagines uh, Agent Carter as the recipient of the Super Soldier Serum uh, instead of Steve Rogers. And then it kind of it kind of plays with a little bit of uh, uh, Iron Man tech. You know, they get they've got Howard Stark in there who sort of designs his own proto I suit. I liked that. That that's angle that's a lot a of fun. Bit. That was a lot of fun. And I think I, I think they're peppering stuff in there like that because they don't want this to be just sort of an A to B story. They don't want it to be like, okay, what if Agent Carter was uh, the the super soldier, and then just tell you the Captain America story with a different character because that would be boring, right? So obviously the story beats are different, the characters involved are different. Steve Rogers is still involved, just right. in a different role, right? Well, I'm about to say, that's what I was impressed with because, I mean, I, I love my history and I love my military history, especially. Uh, mm. And, you know, that is a common thing among military historians who just love debating uh, all topics military is the great what ifs of, of military history. And uh, one of the things that I learned when I went through and got my, my degree especially about what ifs was I had a professor who's like, yeah, what ifs are fun to, to think about to an extent. But when we look at studying history, it is all of the other ancillary things that essentially make the decisions that people make, uh, end up making them essentially almost making them for them. Right. So like, you think, mm. uh, as a, as a, uh, classic example, um, well, I'm trying to think of actually, I was about to say classic example, but realizing I'm so deep down the rabbit hole, making sure it's actually a classic example. Uh, shoot, what's it good? You could one? use, you could almost say Pearl Harbor is a great example of a what if scenario. Because yeah, okay, that was such let's, a huge let's, let's do that one, right? Exactly. Is, you know, with Pearl Harbor, what if, what if the battleships hadn't been at Pearl Harbor and the aircraft carriers had been? And, and, and essentially, in the universe that we occupy, which is what I love about the Marvel what-ifs, because they're already just in the multiverse, so it's assuming you've got these infinite possibilities. But in the universe that we're in, uh, in the example of, of Pearl Harbor, the reason why the battleships are in Pearl Harbor is because they were always in Pearl Harbor on Sundays. The Japanese Imperial Navy knew exactly when to strike them because it was tradition for the battleships to be in uh, harbor on Sunday uh, so that all the sailors could go to church. And the radars right. were turned off uh, at night and in the mornings because 
the radar station was on an eight-hour schedule. They didn't want to run the power overnight. And the aircraft carriers were out on an exercise, more or less essentially because the carrier skippers were knew that something attack like this was possible, but nobody believed them because it was a battleship fleet, not a carrier fleet. So they were out being superstitious and were going to run exercises with their aircraft, which is why they weren't there. So there's, there's all these other extenuating variables that make it so that these events are going to happen because the Imperial Japanese Navy did their intelligence research and knew a lot of this, th- this stuff about uh, what was going on and planned accordingly. Uh, and so that's, that's what I found really interesting about the what ifs is they did go into a lot of the ancillary, uh, you know, essentially butterfly effects and spinoffs of, okay, well, yeah, so if Peggy Carter gets the serum, then what other things in the universe are affected by that? What things would have to have transpired differently mm. for this event to happen? And I think they do a very good job with it. Uh, and some of them are pretty, I mean, oh, like, yeah. so a couple of them are just, uh, uh, from what I can tell so far, are just straight up almost random. Uh, the the second episode, uh, which I... Uh, I'm, I'm blanking on his name that gets that gets kidnapped uh, instead of uh, uh, Star Lord. Uh, uh, T'Challa. T'Challa, thank you. The character who we all know as Black Panther. Right, exactly. Um, there it is, episode two. Yeah, so so him. Which being... I, I, I want to correct. I think last week when we were when we talked about Star Wars Visions, I made the assertion that this was similar and that you could just kind of. Uh, cherry pick these episodes but as we've come to find out uh, obviously I'm going to stay spoiler free there is a sense of continuity to these episodes that I was not aware of until it has as of yesterday it the series has concluded uh, there are nine episodes total oh, nice. apparently there was there was supposed to be a tenth episode um, that they had to cut due to uh, COVID complications oh, no. something about they couldn't yeah. they couldn't finish the episode in post production and it only it only became an issue because the final episode um, has something in it that sort of depends on that missing episode. And so I think a lot of people, when they saw it yesterday, including myself, I was kind of like, "Well, I don't I don't remember that happening." And it's because it's it, it got cut, unfortunately. Oh, but dang. they said I don't know if they I don't know if they intended to do this, uh, but they they said it would be in season two, uh, sort of indirectly confirming that they were going to bring back another season of it. Oh, nice! Uh, oh, which good. is cool. Yeah, no, that's so, fantastic. We'll we'll get to see that episode eventually. Yeah, but yeah, so this yeah, I, episode I, two. I thought the setup for that was oh, you, was, was pretty was pretty uh, kind of funny because it's you know they're looking for uh, they're looking for um, I forget what Star Lord's actual uh, name is in Guardians of the Galaxy. Peter Quill. Thank you. They're looking for Peter Quill, uh, and they allude to the fact that they're looking for a, a power, a, essentially a power reading. Uh, for plot reasons, uh, mm-hmm. which I won't spoil any of the Guardians of the Galaxy's movies over, and of course T'Challa is at uh, uh, is in Wakanda, which is over a vibranium deposit. If you know anything about the Black Panther series, and so the 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 aliens coming to abduct him think, oh yeah, this is the guy we're looking for because the power readings were off the chart. No, he's just standing on top of a vibranium deposit. So that that's the, I liked that piece too because that is sometimes also when you look at the great what ifs of history. Some of them are very much like, man, if someone was just standing five feet to the left, history changes. If, you know, if someone had just decided or, or made mm. this one blunder or had just not had their coffee that morning. Uh, so th- those I find uh, interesting what ifs, too, because like I say, they're the, they're the ones that are essentially almost inexorable, where you would have to change 20 or 30 variables to even get the beginning of the what if that you want. And some of them are just like... You know, if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed that morning, history changes. <laughs> right. And uh, it's it's fun because it's like it lets you sort of see the way these stories play out. I mean, the in T'Challa becoming Star-Lord, he there are a lot of similarities in the way his personality develops. But then it's also he really was he's a completely different character. And that sort of sends ripples throughout the Wakandan side, which we see later. Um, but you know that is essentially that's a major character that's their prince being abducted right uh, and taken into space and also you know as you were saying uh, no spoilers but the significance of who Peter Quill is that ends up having ramifications later as well Um, the fact that he is still on earth um, 
And something that I think was is very it's unfortunate that this is our reality, but it, it was to be expected is uh, there were a lot of naysayers that came uh, out of the woodwork about how Disney is in their efforts to be inclusive. They will gender bend characters or they're they're making characters of other ethnicities just for the sake of having them be those characters. And, uh, you know, those kinds of people have nothing but nasty things to say. But obviously, these first two episodes, you have a, a woman who is. Uh, essentially taking the role of Captain America the second episode being a black man who is playing Star-Lord and it it sort of fed into that fire Um, and thankfully now that the series is wrapped I haven't I haven't seen that uh, vitriol quite as much I mean that's not to say that those people have quieted down but it's it's clear that the people who made this show they were they were focused on making an interesting story and I think it shows because well, the yeah. the show ended up being great. I, I was about to say that's the I, yeah. There's I don't know. There's don't, there's people who much, just like being I don't much like naysayers like nasty. that because I I like the creativity of, of all of those what ifs and I I think that's cool. Uh, you know, as I I right. like I do like seeing uh, more diversity. Uh, you know, I, I, as a as a great for instance, Rogue One with Star Wars. Uh, in oh man, I gotta actually I gotta pull up the cast because I don't have the cast. Well, while you're here. doing that, I want to point out also uh, in the face of those sort of nasty comments, it's not even an issue where um, these characters weren't pulled out of thin air. You know what I mean? They existed in the right. world. These are established characters yeah. with their own uh, voices and their own personalities. It's not as simple as saying they they just made Captain America a woman. That's insulting right. to the character right. that they've written for uh, for Agent Carter. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is obviously a tremendous amount of creativity went into that. Uh, but the, you know, the that was what I was gonna say about Rogue One is uh, Diego Luna who plays uh, Cassian. Uh, uh, oh shoot, I just lost his last name. Why am I? Oh God, why am I so bad at this? Sorry, I like looked up and then I missed. <laughs> You're okay. doing great, Chris. Cassie and Andor. That's what I thought, and then I thought that that wasn't the right name. So I was, anyhow, yeah. So uh, Diego Luna, who plays Cassian, uh, uh, essentially kept his accent for the for the movie, like his his natural accent uh, uh, that that he has, mm-hmm. and was an awesome and uh, tremendous representation of. Uh, uh, Latin culture uh, in Star Wars, and that like totally jives with the universe. Because anytime you read like the role playing game books or any of the expanded guide books, humanity in Star Wars is not some monolithic species. It is as diverse right. as it is on Earth now, and which makes total sense because if one planet like ours can create such diversity in human beings, then what in the world is going to happen to humanity once you have them scattered across literally thousands of star systems over hundreds of thousands of years? You're going to get as many variants as you possibly can with humanity. So, like, actually seeing a realistic uh, diversity represented in any kind of sci-fi, I think is really exciting because if you if you push to the stars, that only in a lot of ways increases the the, the potential for all kinds of variation in uh, in humanity. And I think that's very beautiful. Uh, so so I mean that's I, that's why I say I I don't, I don't much like the naysayers on this one because I, I think it squelches the no. creative possibilities uh, uh, as well as just kind of being hateful in a, a way that I don't like either. But you know yeah just, there's the, well there's well, there's nothing constructive that comes from that yeah kind exactly of exactly hateful thinking right. Because I mean, you could use the same energy. If any, if somebody out there wants to complain about a character in Star Wars having an accent, you can apply the same logic to say why wouldn't that? You know what I mean? Right. No, exactly. It's it's a fictional universe. There's no there's no law that says everybody has to speak with like a, you know, Midwestern American accent yeah. in a Star Wars movie, yeah. a movie that takes place in space. You know. No, but it, uh, it, but yeah, we, there's exactly. no there's no room for there's no room for the the baseless hatred. Uh, at least not here at Right Nerdy. There's no, there's none of that nonsense. No, 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 no. Yeah, and it's. I mean, but I, I think uh, it's, it's well, it's like you said, the the representation that matters a lot more than some people give it cre- uh, credence because, oh, like, I mean, until you had Mr. until go, you had yeah, a character like Black Panther in the Marvel movies, uh, there were it was just it was all you know white people, and so. You put a character up there that looks like—I mean, that's not what all Amer- all of Americans look like. And there's little kids out there that can go to 
costume stores for Halloween and dress up as their favorite comic book character that looks like them, the smiles it puts on kids' faces, that's worth it alone. Well, no, exactly. And that's so important for psychological development, uh, especially in young kids. If you can actually see yourself in you know, roles that you want to be when you grow up, that makes it a lot easier to have those dreams, right? And so that that's the... That, that's one of the important pieces, and I think that's where media plays a highly important role, where video games play a highly important role, why you want diversity in these in these mediums. Because you want to be able to uh, instill in kids of uh, all ages and backgrounds and everything else that they actually can be anything, because that, that it really is. It's, it's tropey, and I almost hate saying it, because it's, it's the thing you hear all the time, and then, you know... A bunch of us get office jobs and, and end up not being maybe quite what we thought we were going to be when we were kids. But still, it's if you squelch that right. dream when someone is young, it, it's not healthy for them. It's better it's better to be able to instill in somebody that wonder, that yearning, that drive to be you know something big and exciting, and you know to be the superhero, to be the fighter jock, to be you know the the uh, to be the artist, to be you know, the scientist to be the engineer, all these kinds of things. Like that's, that's having, having diversity across all of those fields is highly important just, you know, from both a, a quality of life, uh, from, you know, an equality and an egality standpoint, and, and also just uh, uh, from a creativity standpoint, because the more people with different backgrounds that you get in a room together solving today's really hard to solve problems, the better. Because if you're getting, you know, it's what we talk about with wanting to, 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 when we talk about stuff here, trying to give as much background and, and excitement to the nerddoms that we love, because we want to get more people involved in them. Because once you do, the conversations are so much more fun, because, you know, somebody who's got a different background, then he's going to have a different take on it. And then when you're debating Star Wars Starfighter battles, it's, it's more fun. Exactly. It's more fun. The stories are just better. Exactly. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. The stories are just better. <laughs> But yeah, I didn't. I didn't want. I didn't mean to derail us or take us down a uh, existential rabbit hole. But no, but I, mean, that's, I think that's, that, it's an important one. It's an important one because it's it's right. definitely a hot topic today. And I think that's the point that gets missed a lot of times is it, it's it's easy for people to get caught in their negative head spaces uh, when there's this great mm. to me this great positive positivity to greater representation that is so powerful and so important. Uh, to to hold in that positive light and and to see the hope and awesomeness around that. Exactly, you said it. You said it perfectly. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, but yeah, that that uh, that's so that second episode. Um, I thought it was really good. It, I mean, it it's not one of my favorites. I didn't dislike it though. Uh, a lot of people disliked it because it's a little bit goofier. Uh, the tone they take kind of a silly direction with it, especially with the. The ramifications that it has for certain villains uh we see some appearances by a couple of different villains who are it's like you were talking about earlier with the butterfly effect their lives have been their trajectories have been altered in a drastic way i um, found that very interesting i think that's really the, cool with the people that showed up you're like oh <laughs> oh okay right that's cool <laughs> <laughs> exactly and then uh I guess we'll we'll close out with episode three here. Um, you you probably didn't make it that far. I, I didn't, but yeah, let's let's go for it. So the the third episode, uh, the premise is uh, the first Avengers movie. We know that. Uh, well, I guess it's 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 established at the ends of other movies and post credit scenes that became famous. Um, Nick Fury obviously goes out of his way to assemble each of the members of the Avengers, and episode three posits uh what would happen if each of those characters were being uh targeted by an assassin oh, or a, yeah. a serial I'm killer was slowly this episode, wiping right. them out mm -hmm. and there's there's definitely some uh familiar faces that pop back up that are uh for me at least it was unexpected because they were characters a great thing about this show is like the movies we know the movies developed over time as they are and we know that the actors came on board as they came along in a linear timeline. The the beauty of this of this what if show is they can take this pool of characters and voice actors, and they can throw people at you that uh, you know may may or may not have existed at the time that movie was made in the movie timeline. So that's really a beautiful thing. So obviously, I don't want to give away anything about that episode because it is very good. It takes kind of a darker tone. 
uh, we do see a face that definitely was not uh, was not in that first Avengers movie making an appearance, uh, and it it really uh, puts a fun spin on it, especially given this character's background. So just consider that a juicy little teaser for the third episode. <laughs> uh, so you're, you're making me want to watch it all the more. Uh, but I mean, like, yeah, I've I, I've been really impressed with what they've done, and this is uh, I think been a great. Uh, it's been a great follow-on to Star Wars Visions because I I do quite enjoy animation as a medium, uh, especially mm-hmm. cause, you know because it, it's something that I think especially uh, fans of Japanese uh, animation have understood for a long time, which is that you know uh, animated series aren't just for kids. Uh, is you can you can use the medium right. as a powerful way to tell uh, more grown-up stories, uh, especially ones that need that kind of visual umph to back the emotional. Uh, content of like you know uh akira is a good example uh, I, would, I would definitely not show that to a kid but also right the <laughs> the gravitas of that story wouldn't be the same if it was live action um at least mm. not at the time that it was released maybe today someone could do it but like at the time that it was released in the 80s animation was the only way you could you could tell that story uh and give it the visual effects that it needed to have the power that it had so, so I'm exactly. excited that, and, that, that we got the that one thing. The... Sorry, go ahead. Go the ahead. thing that Star Wars Visions I thought was no, it's fine. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're um, good. I think we have a little Star bit of a delay in the uh, in the audio between yeah. us. So I, I, I've been <laughs> stepping on you a lot by accident, and and vice versa. And I think it's more about our connection. Well, than... what's funny is what's funny is I try to predict when you're about to finish the sentence, and I try to jump. Uh, before I try to beat the delay, essentially, and it's it's backfiring in uh, I'm, I'm doing the same way. thing, and I'm anticipating exactly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what I was gonna say is the the beauty of Visions was they they really toyed with a lot of different art styles, and that was a lot of fun. And the Marvel What If I was very skeptical of because it it uses uh, I guess con- computer generated animation that might not be technically accurate, but it's they're 3D models that aren't as, um, gosh, I don't know the right word to use. I don't want to say artistic because it's cl- it's clearly somebody took time to create it. Like it is, it is art in itself, but it's not as it's not as varied in its expression. I guess I should say. Uh, yeah. It, it took me a while to get used to it, but I, I I've definitely warmed up to it. There, there's a there's an interesting difference between the computer generated uh, 2D animation and hand drawn because yeah, there's there's a it's almost mm. it can it can feel. What's the right way to say this? The consistency is different. That's what it is. Because when it's hand drawn, obviously an artist right. is having to draw every single page, so you're going to naturally get uh, some variation and differences uh, because it is an artist having to to re essentially re render those scenes from different angles by hand. Whereas when you've got it computer animated you have some ability to manipulate the models and also you don't have the uh, the frame rate of each individual hand drawn frame going by you can increase the frame rate because you're dealing with a model that is essentially can be rendered as fast as your graphics card can render it so there there's definitely a, a there's a there's a different feel to it uh, both of them are incredibly artistically expressive but it is it, it's it's almost its own subset uh, medium in a way because it, it, it yeah it's it, it takes some getting used to if you're used to watching hand drawn so right not quite uncanny well, valley that's I, uh, not quite the right word for it but it's just it's just different it's it's just a little bit different but but yeah right. I think they handled it yeah, pretty well mean. with uh, with this because I've definitely I've seen some where it almost has more of like a almost like a felt board storyboard kind of feel to it. Um, and that was kind of some of the mm-hmm. earlier attempts at doing computer aided uh, animation, but but nowadays it's gotten a lot better, and they can almost do a depth of field, almost like a three D effect uh, with the models that you can't quite get in hand drawn animation. So it's it's neat to see how the medium has evolved and what they've been able to do artistically with it. Right, and it it definitely like once I got used to it. I... I think it looks. I think it looks very nice. I mean, it's well done. It might not suit everybody's taste, but it right. is well done. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not half-assed animation. No, no, but, definitely um, not. So yeah, that definitely that not. that third episode, that third episode is definitely darker. Uh, and then uh, we can talk about it next week. the The next episode that's after that uh, was probably my favorite of the batch. I think 
uh, and it takes on a much more uh, almost creepy sort of dark tone that involves the uh, I don't know if you did you ever watch the Doctor Strange solo movie? Yes, yes. I okay. quite well, enjoyed there you go. that no, one. That was a good one. Then I think you'll really love episode four. That was uh, definitely my favorite. So yeah, do that's your homework for next week. Watch three and four. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, I will. They're, they're I definitely, will. Uh, especially since they sort of open the series on such a goofy, um, lighthearted tone, especially with that second episode. Uh, three and four kind of brings it back down to a almost a creepy sort of what if uh, corner of the universe. Nice, nice. But. Uh, well, which is perfect as we're Did going you into have, October uh, and into Spooky Month. So, <laughs> yeah, that's appropriate. Yeah, we we should definitely we're gonna have to do some some spooky themed uh, things for this month. Oh I yeah, think that'd be sure. fun. Oh for sure. <laughs> Uh, but did you have any uh, any other thoughts on on Marvel What If or or the Twitch breach? No, I about to say uh, other than go watch it, and uh, if uh, you have a Twitch account, rotate your password. Maybe rotate your password a couple of times. Oh yeah, all definitely. That stuff, all that stuff that I said before, uh, and uh, and yeah, just stay informed. So. <laughs> yeah, thankful. I'm, I'm I'm glad you brought that up on this episode because that's what I'm going to do as soon as I get off here. Is uh, change my twitch info i might even change my amazon info now that i know that they are affiliated yeah i mean it couldn't hurt especially if uh those passwords happen to be the same uh yeah because like, like i say it's 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 an attack vector so if if you diversify the the passwords then you're you're less um uh vulnerable right well all right well if that uh that about does it i guess we can uh close the book on this one yeah, so you've been listening to another wonderful episode of The Right and Nerdy News with the Right and Nerdy News crew uh, with Jay and Chris. And with this is member of the, uh, we're, we are members of the wider Writing Nerdy community. Uh, there's, of course, the Writing Nerdy podcast that is also recorded live on this Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Uh If you're not watching this live, you're probably watching us on YouTube because that's the only other spot that this is available. Uh, but in case you are watching us live and don't know about our YouTube, if you go over to YouTube and search Right Nerdy, you can find us there. And that is where you will see uh, this episode go up. Generally on Saturdays is when they hit uh, YouTube. And of course, they'll stay uh, in Twitch uh, as well as a video on demand for as long as Twitch will let us keep them here, uh, which I forget. I think it's a few days. I don't remember exactly how long. Uh, if you don't uh, or aren't able to join, rather, our uh, live recording sessions of the Writing Nerdy Podcast, you can find the Writing Nerdy Podcast where all great RSS feeds can be found, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Libsyn, and Verbal. And we also, of course, have the wonderful Write and Nerdy website, which is at www.writinnerdy.com. That's writinnerdy.com. we got a Contact Us page over there. If you want to hear us discuss uh, something uh, new and interesting uh, to you, uh, or if you want to have us expand on a topic we've already touched on, or if you've just got good suggestions for the next episode of one of our shows, drop us a line. Let us know how we're doing. We would love to hear from you. Uh, and lastly, because I don't think we advertise it enough, we've also got a Discord. There's links down below if you want to join our Discord server, become part of the conversation over there. We'd be happy to have you. So, yeah, until next time, stay safe. Did we we figured out what he says, right? We, did we ever get that down? <laughs> Shit. Uh, stay safe. Uh, don't have too much fun without us. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, stay safe. Don't have too much fun with that. Zach, Zach, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> if we haven't gotten your closing catchphrase right, then you just need to change it to what we're saying. That way, <laughs> it's all accurate. <laughs> stay stay safe and don't have too much fun without us. That's perfect. Perfect. Adios. <laughs> See ya.